No matter how you stand on the issue of climate change, there's no doubt throughout the United States we've seen a change in weather patterns. And that's creating a whole new business for more eco-friendly homes. So today we're going to be talking about five eco-friendly building materials and what necessarily they're not telling us the truth about. Some of them are not necessarily nefarious, but there are things that you definitely need to know. Nearly half of Americans who plan to move in the next year say natural disasters and extreme temperatures factor in their decision to relocate, according to the survey conducted by Redfin. One eco-friendly product that most people have know about and have seen and is probably the most common is solar panels. So let me give you the perspective from a real estate side. Here in Louisiana, we have tons of homes that have these solar panels. A lot of people believe they create a equity or value to your home. In a lot of cases, in most cases, they do not because a lot of home sellers have leased these solar panels and then the home buyers have to assume the lease from the sellers. If not, the sellers have to kind of absorb that cost and continue to pay for it until it's paid off on a house they don't even own anymore. It also can cause problems with title because the lease is in somebody else's name and it's attached to the property. They kind of become a nightmare. Now, some people have opted to look into solar shingles, something that hasn't become widely popular yet, but of course, Elon Musk likes to promote his solar shingles. We'll see when they get onto the market. They do look aesthetically pleasing, but the price point is high. And that's one of those questions you need to ask yourself. Is the juice really worth the squeeze? Not only that, if you have a major hurricane that comes through or a tornado, those things get blown off. The replacement cost is going to cost a lot. And you're going to have to see if your insurance carrier will cover that cost for replacement of roof and shingles if you're going to plan on using these solar shingles. It's not that common yet, but it's definitely something on the horizon. But I will tell you that there are some pluses to solar panels. Of course, you're going to be saving energy. And if you happen to have one of these battery packs that are uh, attached to your home, they can actually save you when your electricity goes out during a hurricane. Just recently, we had Hurricane Ida come through and there were several people that had solar panels and were able to run things in their home because of the solar energy that was created with those panels. So they definitely have a benefit. Now, would that generator probably worked better? I don't know. <laughs> a generator costs about $6,000. Solar panels can cost a lot more. One thing that a lot of solar panel companies may not mention to you is the fact that if you do happen to have a solar panel that's attached to your roof itself, it may invalidate your warranty on the roof and the roofing shingles. And it can also cause leaks in your roof on the underside. So when you go in your attic, if the solar panels were not installed properly, you can have leaks that come in through the area that had been screwed in. So just work very closely with the solar panel company and your roofing company so you don't invalidate your warranty. You don't want to let that go. If you're looking for more ways to be more eco-friendly in your own home, there's some simple things you can do like adding a faucet aerator and only run your dishwasher when it's full. You can actually save 100 pounds a year in carbon pollution if you just do this. So if you're building an eco-friendly house, you're probably going to want eco-friendly insulation. There's all sorts of products when it comes to insulation you can have throughout your house. You have wool, they even have cut up blue jeans. There's a product called Aerogel that is wicked cool. Of course, you have different types of cellulose. There's even a spray foam that's made of castor oil. So one of the things that I have been told for eons about all of these types of products is they're way too expensive when you put them in your uh, house because they had the same exact R value and there were no different than fiberglass except for the fact that they were more eco-friendly. So you're kind of doing it for yourself. That isn't true. I ended up looking up some prices on homedepot.com because I was actually leaning towards the fact that these people were correct. And it's not true. The one I was really interested in is that blue jean type of insulation. And you can even get that at Lowe's. So if you're thinking about redoing your house or even putting up a new type of shed with some insulation, consider using a more eco-friendly product like this blue jean. Like I said, not all of the insulations are gonna be less money than let's say fiberglass, but you still have some options when you're looking for a more eco-friendly type of material to redo your home or build a brand new home. Everybody likes options. I like options. According to the Associated Press, climate change could push more than 200 million people to leave their homes in the next three decades, unless urgent action is taken to reduce the global emissions and bridge the development gap. One of my most favorite eco-friendly building materials is bamboo. Not only is it like super fast growing, so it can be harvested a lot faster than trees, because you know trees you gotta wait 20, 30 years. With bamboo, you can do it every three to five years. It has a variety of uses throughout the home. You can use it on tiles, you can use it for flooring, you can even use it for trim work. But one disadvantage when it comes to bamboo that most people don't talk about is the fact that where it comes from, it has to ship like from countries like Malaysia and Vietnam. Those are gonna be the 
the biggest producers of bamboo, and they're going to be the ones that are shipping it across the United States to us. So really the carbon footprint on them may not be as good as we originally thought. Not only that, they don't really tell you about the quality of bamboo. It will deteriorate if you do buy cheap bamboo. It is highly susceptible to moisture damage because of the high starch content. So if you buy a cheaper quality type of bamboo, you're going to see a lot of deterioration very quickly. Just make sure that the company that you're buying your bamboo flooring or tiling from, it's been harvested and treated and stored correctly. That makes a big difference in the type of quality you get from your bamboo flooring or even tile. Now there have been successful neighborhoods that are eco-friendly like this one in Bainbridge Island, Washington. Currently they do not have any single family dwellings available, but they do have some townhomes that are opening up at the end of 2021 into 2022. What is it that you're wanting to build to make your outside structure more eco-friendly? Of course, there's lots of building materials out there, but what I would like to highlight is hempcrete. This is a lightweight building material that's made from hemp, not the like wacky tobacco stuff like you're thinking. Think of this as like the sober cousin to the marijuana plant. It's super strong and lightweight. And what they do is they shred up the material and they mix it up with a lime-based binder. And then they start packing this material together in forms. You, now you can also buy a hempcrete block. But in a lot of cases, if you're putting it in walls, they're gonna put up a form and then they're gonna put this material in it and stamp it down. It's fire resistant, it's moisture resistant, it's eco-friendly, hemp is easy to grow, so it's super sustainable. Now, so what's the big downside? <laughs> Cause you know, there's a downside. First of all, there isn't a lot of people in the United States that are doing hempcrete. It isn't something that is like super mega popular. Popular, so you're gonna have a hard time finding anybody to do hempcrete. The second thing is that not everybody's on board and you could have a problem with reselling your home because it's made of hempcrete. And if you look at a lot of the literature on hempcrete, they're only guaranteeing that it can stay structurally sound for 100 years. And you're thinking, well, 100 years, that sounds pretty good. It may not sound super great to an insurance company. I mean, it has so many different pluses. It's just the longevity hasn't been tested yet. So only time will tell if hempcrete is going to be something of the future. I hope it is because it is such a great material and wicked eco-friendly right now though it is expensive. They haven't necessarily brought down the price because it is such a new eco-friendly product. And just like anything, whenever you have innovation, it always costs way too much at the beginning. And then slowly over time, as people adapt, it ends up coming down in price. So fingers crossed for hempcrete because it's a good stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> now there are houses throughout the United States that are actually right now built with hempcrete. Here's a few examples right here. If you read any articles about these specific houses, they'll tell you it was not necessarily the cheapest thing. They were just very happy they could make something that was very eco-friendly. Now you don't have to worry about the toxicity of your hempcrete. You don't have to worry about, you know, kids licking the walls. Nobody's going to get high. Like I said, it's a sober cousin. <laughs> Can you imagine the kids licking the wall? <laughs> that would be so funny. If you're not wanting to go the hempcrete route and you're looking for something that's a little bit easier to build but still majorly eco-friendly you may want to consider looking at green modular homes now there's lots of companies throughout the united states that make green type of modular homes and modular homes are like prefab homes that are built in sections and then at the time of delivery they're put together kind of like legos so you could have a home that's about 3,000 square feet and that would take about seven modules to put together and they'd stack on top of each other all these little modulars are made in a temperature controlled environment and then they're just brought to the site and connected together. It's going to have less of an environmental impact around the surrounding area because you don't have as much noise pollution and it will take less time to put together and it doesn't have the time constraints that normal typical construction has. These homes are typically very energy efficient, much more than traditional home building. Throughout the United States, it seems that more and more people are leaning towards modular construction as an option for them. The one thing I do want to point out with modular construction is that years ago it was a little less expensive than traditional home building but as the cost of homes has increased throughout the United States and building materials have been much harder to get modular construction has been actually a little bit more expensive Aww. than traditional home building so if you're wanting to do the modular home route to be more eco-friendly towards your house and have an energy efficient home just know that you probably are going to be spending a little bit more than your neighbors another thing is is if you are looking at modular homes make sure the HOA in your area allows for modular construction. Some old HOAs do not allow for it. So have those plans approved ahead of time because they don't understand what a modular home is because it is a regular home if not built 
to the best standards above traditional home building. And they have images of a manufactured home, which is a totally different product. I think this idea that climate change is gonna be factored into how people think about housing, it hasn't happened yet. The only people who have figured it out are the actuarialists, the people who have to calculate the cost of insuring these properties. To build a green, more eco-friendly home is going to be a more difficult process than buying and building a traditional home, mostly because of the fact that you're not gonna have as many people that understand how these products work. You're gonna really have to research your home builders in your area so they know how to work with the materials that you're wanting to use for your home build. To build a more eco-friendly home, in most cases, you're trying to be a little bit more conscious of the environment, but you also really wanna save a lot of money on energy costs. All of these products will save you money on your energy costs. You just have to weigh out the, the initial costs and the long-term benefits for each one of these products. So let me know which one of these products would you consider in your next home? Let me know in the comments section. To watch some more videos about lies home builders tell you, you're gonna wanna watch this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters. And so does the environment.